Yeah. <laughs> All right. Getting the old Kawasaki mule ready for Wind Rock this weekend. We got one week. We one week. Them. Well, yeah. we got quite a few projects to get done in one week because yeah. we got to take them all. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. Next Saturday, we're riding. Seven, Seven days. days. Seven days. Six well, days to get it all done because yeah. we got to be ready to take it. In six days, yeah. So we sold this uh, well, a year and a half ago. We finished it, sold you it immediately. Remember. You remember. Let's show some beautiful bean footage. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot the tree. So, so maybe we did that. <laughs> possibly. So we sold this and that guy was crazy rough on it. Broke the front bumper, bent broke the side, side unless it was us. No, the the guy let his grandkids play on it uh, constantly. Horrible. Mistake. Yeah, broke this. Um the bolts came out of the dash. I don't know how that happened because we put lock nuts on I thought we did, maybe we didn't. Um he broke the exhaust off of it. Put on a stock muffler that he bent into a certain shape. That's restricting it like crazy. This is a Duramax 440cc with a higher amperage charging system on it. Remember that? Yep. Cool. But that doesn't really matter because it ain't staying. Nope. So we like Duramaxes. We love them. They're awesome. But we got a Vegas Cart 625cc to shove in there. If you also remember, flip that latch under that bed to lean the bed back. Yep. That's sweet. So that's awesome having a tilt bed, but this is the big deal. The differential on this, we're running it in reverse to drive forward. Because of this weird placement, most pulleys on diffs are on this side. The original engine spun backwards. This is worn out. Shot the yeah, belt spoon boom <laughs> shot. So this is the problem is this dip. It's awesome because it has a dip lock, but it sucks because it's 14 to 1 gearing ratio and forward. So it's just way too, it's awesome when you're in some steep stuff, but normal use this thing you're revving we ain't, out. yeah we ain't so doing that engine has a billet rod and the guy also tried to put standard screws in the side case and busted the side case in multiple places you see it yeah so uh we're gonna pull this engine set it on the shelf <laughs> this thing's been beat up <laughs> oh you didn't even show the pan hard bar oh yeah so we broke the pan hard bar and that's why this this plate is here we welded this on and I welded two gussets on. Well, she snapped right there. This is super thin metal. Snapped right here, and it completely cracked around through there. So what I'm gonna do is build a pan hard bar with heim joints, completely replace this with a thicker piece of steel that's stronger, and we're gonna remove this whole diff and put a club, put a club car diff on it. We have to pull the club car diff in here and gearing swap it. So club cars are like a 12 to one ratio and that's too low. I don't like stuff that low. We're gonna have the horsepower to have a, low, a higher gearing ratio. So we're going with an eight to one gearing set, which is 400 bucks, but I paid 150 for the dip. Okay, so money. <laughs> it's 550 upgrade is basically what it costs to upgrade this diff. And we just saw what the upgrade does by riding this. Yeah, and that thing did like 40 mile an hour easy. You could just cruise 35, 40 mile an this hour. This thing's so. gonna be a beast in them woods. Mm -hmm. Especially with that 625 pushing some good perp. So we gotta pull the bed off. We gotta pull the swing arm off. We gotta disassemble the whole entire swing arm and then start fitting the club car rear end on it. But first we gotta put the gearing set in the club car rear end and then we'll get to this. So let's get started. Ready? That's, That's stripped. stripped. Phillips head is the best. <laughs> it's catching on the steering wheel. Catch 22. <laughs> I get it. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, you broke it. it. Now the only thing we got to really unhook is the shifter linkage, the uh, e-brake cables. We're going to unhook from probably up here, most likely, and uh, then we can unbolt 
It, there's basically two shocks, a panhard bar, and one bolt up front. This is like the semi-independent we use on. Look at that belt. There Holy cow. God. Mm -hmm. How long has it been on here? Like a freight two train. Years. Year and a half, two years, yeah. And they were rough on this thing. They beat this thing apart. Broke half of the front bumper off, <laughs> bent the other side of the front bumper. Broke the panhard bar in yeah. two different places. I'll try it. We can. Oh my gosh. Bro, look at that. Oh yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I back and kick it and break it. <laughs> kick it and break it then. Horse kick. Okay. Go ahead and start taking anything you can that's going to help me get this engine on. You just grab tools and do it. Public service now. Our bills are about to get a lot worse because I'm full time. <laughs> That means I'm here more often to ruin more stuff, which is good for the viewers. Yeah, they get to see more stuff get fixed more often. All right, shift your linkage. Oh. I am going to have to learn where all the tools are now. I don't think I've been here. So there's <laughs> all... <laughs> He just went through every screwdriver and the picture is on top of the screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> Who looks at it? That's like the owner's manual thing we were talking about. Who looks at that? Oh, Ain't nobody gonna look at that. Mm. All right, the only bad thing about removing this diff is it has diff lock. And diff lock is nice, but we're gonna weld up the new rear end most likely so it's posi track all the time. All right, now we only have one brake line on this. So like a car, you know, you have a, a solid brake line going back and then it goes to rubber to the to the axle. Then it goes back to hard to each, you know, because the only flex point is the axle. It's the same way. Hard line goes to a small rubber line, then hard line again. So all I gotta do is take off that one. And then shifter, brakes is unhooked. Then we're basically taking out these two shock bolts, which we can jack up the frame, take those out. Pick up that, this whole thing will roll back. So. Birthday's coming up. I want aluminum jack. Oh. I'm trying to make where I, I'm gonna get, keep getting fatter, obviously, because I got power tools. I have a lighter jack, so it's, I'm trying to get away from cardio. Hmm, 16 watts fill up. Got it. Cheaper, mister. Here's the world's the worst pin hard bar. Even the pin hard bar is like junk metal. Like this thing weighs nothing. All right, so Lonnie just got the brake line unhooked. So down there you can see uh, he took out the hard line from the rubber line. So now we just got this one bolt holding us back. Close your eyes. Nope. And bam! Got it. I told you that was happening. Oh. And you said, ow! Hmm. Uh, the engine has a high torque cam, the Marine cam in it. I think it's no, 275 lift cam from Go Power Sports, also a billet rod from Go Power Sports, and a true comment pulley with the bushings on it. You can see one of them is locked up from how much material is in there from the belt. Um, but the bushings are still good. So that's a good pulley. I mean, it looks a little rough, but we'll keep it, of course. I mean, we're keeping everything here. Uh, I will get rid of this diff. If anybody's interested in this diff, I'll hook you up. Locally. Locally. I have two of them, actually. Uh, Randy has one. I have one. Uh, is that it? Will the bolt knock down? It should. All right, so I'm pulling the old dipstick out to show you guys. Can you see that? Right. This thing is covered in metal fuzz. Lonnie will bring it over and show you, but these are linked in the Amazon uh, affiliate links in the comment section below. They are very handy and they help the channel out if you was to look at them and purchase them. But those, that's saving your engine right there, having that in there. You can get them for 212s or big blocks. So off camera, I got a piece of 3 8 uh, round stock and just extended my hit and knocked her a few times. She popped right out. It's kind of like a bushing or a ball joint or something. 
So we got it out. Uh, what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna look over the swing arm. I'll probably reuse the swing arm because it's gonna save me a ton of time. Just cut the whole pan hard bar set up off of it, grind it all smooth, build one. Cause this looks like it's like 14 gauge, which I always use eighth inch thick steel on my pan hard bars. Um, so I'm gonna build a whole new pan hard bar and uh, mount the new diff on it. Under the red bench, or the green bench. All right, so this is a 1988 to 96 Club Car DS transaxle. So this is a forward and reverse uh, transaxle and neutral, actually. A lot of golf carts don't have the neutral. You kind of just got to set it in between forward and reverse, but this actually has a full neutral. So what we're going to do is pull these axle stubs off. I think it's going to be easier just to unbolt it right here where the stubs, the housings bolt to the diff. We're going to pull this apart. And then we got to separate this to do an eight to one gearing set. This has a 12 to one gearing set in it, which is way too low geared for what we're wanting to do with it. So we got to separate it, get that gearing out. And uh, first we're going to drain all the fluid, then get these axle tubes removed. Refuel. Okay, so we're back on the mule ski and we got that easy go diff on the last episode. You saw us get it re-geared to eight to one. And we was gonna do the 625, but the reason we wasn't able to is because it's such a long engine. A V-twin's taller 
but it's not as long. So we decided to go with the Duramax 713 cc. I've cut this out because we've been test fitting a alternator kit on it, so don't mind this. All right, so our discount code for Duramax is actually live during October, uh, and it's for 20% off all engines and pressure washers, not generators. Generators are really hard to come by right now. So uh, you can get this 713 cc Hoss. Uh, we rode the golf cart with it. And it's smooth. We got a Go Power Sports engine plate. We got a mount on this, so this engine just setting in place. But the problem we're having is this has this easy go had mechanical drum brakes. We got some tractor work going on outside. But mechanical drum brakes where the mule had a hydraulic disc and the mule had a different lug pattern. So what we're gonna do is I pulled one axle out. The only way the there was way to get these axles off, you pull off the drum, you gotta have some good clip pliers. There's a clip behind here. Kind of a pain to get to. Okay, you see that clip? In there, I just got off. Mm -hmm. Now we can pry this axle out. Probably a good time to do axle bearings, but I don't have none. So we're going to pry against this. This is pretty much your, your wheel cylinder right here, but it's all mechanical. I'm just popping that bearing out of that. Whoop, yep, there. too much. Who? Okay. All right, so Lonnie got this off off camera because he's strong. It cost me something, though. <laughs> he is, man. Uh, I got a boo boo. Oh! <laughs> Everybody starts puking. Uh, so we took four half inch uh, bolt or five sixteenths bolts out that was holding this on there. So now we have the whole drum assembly off. So what I'm thinking would be cool, we slide this axle back in now just for mocking up purposes. purposes. Come on, baby. Getting the splines. Ooh. Okay. Splines. Go ahead. A little bit more. Okay, that's it. When you hit steel, when you, <laughs> you've gone far enough. You've gone. If you hit the railroad, Josh, you've gone too far. Cool, cool. All right, so we're finally getting gravel in our mud pit outside. All right, so that clip looks like it's all the way in there. Uh, so I'm wondering if I can fit a disc back here and a caliper out here and still clear our wheel. That's the only thing. So we can go grab go power sports disc their 150 rear disc and we we'll have to make a wheel a hub that fits yeah and we can grab one of our this is a golf cart pattern that's the only bad thing like i need it to be that i got an adapter that adapts this to that which would space our wheel out a little bit more harder in your wheel bearings but you know you win some you lose some Dang, look at that. Dang, Daniel. Dang, Daniel. Back at it again with the Duramax 713. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got the, it's it's tilted, of course, because we got it clamped like that. But I do think we need to bring the front down. So what we're gonna have to do is notch this, and I wanna run this quarter inch flat bar across, weld it like right here to give a front brace. But if we notch this engine, plate which we can pull the engine off now that will allow the engine to sit flat so what we need to do is clamp this flat down on the table instead of cockeyed so we can get the engine kind of flat now i mean sure you know Lonnie been putting in work look at that most of that's in his lungs yeah you can't it afford should respirators. Be three times that well we got them we just <laughs> i for one she's <laughs> dead <laughs> uh so we're getting the hubs made at the machine shop for the disc brake conversion but that's fine, we can run it just like this with no disc brakes on the back at first. So we are gonna be running the alternator on this setup and it'll set up there. So we got plenty of clearance for that, but Performance 670s right now- Clarence who? Clarence Whitwall. <laughs> uh, they're making the kit for this engine. It's different, it's got different offset than the 670. So once we get our disc brakes, we'll be good. But right now I have some wheel adapters. So wheel adapters are gonna do two things. They're gonna adapt the wheel to the, so we have the same it's rim. The <laughs> it's the name. So we have the same rim all the way around so we can have one spare on the roof rack and it work front and back. And 
it'll space us out a couple inches, two inches on each side. Which is usually what mules come with is sand tires all the way around. Yeah, that's what that was, yeah. That has the same as a, like a 150 go-kart. So, uh, yeah, we'll carry on. We'll trim that engine plate, get that set up, and we'll show you when we're done. Somebody skipped leg day, so we don't have our wheel adapters in. I end up finding, so uh, golf cart wheels are four on four. These are four on 137. So uh, eBay for $85 had the adapters and they're one and a half inch thick. So that'll give us a little bit more spacing. I mean, obviously we're running a different size tire. But you can see the front tire is going to stick out, you know, past the back. So that'll give us a little stance. I know it's harder on wheel bearings, but it's not as bad as doing it on the front. Front's really where you give yourself some issues. So it should be okay. We have the machine shop making our brake brackets. It's going to hold disc brakes on each side so that's going to be super handy and we can do turning brakes if we don't weld up this diff so i think that'd be pretty sweet to be able to have some tractor turning brakes in it uh, but that duramax is all mounted on there looks awesome uh everything's fully welded and ready to go i don't know when the alternator kit will be here uh performance 670 still working on that so make sure to check out the links and we'll have it updated as stuff comes out but um also go power sports can get you about any pulley you need this is their 780 drive pulley and this is a 780 really large driven pulley. This is off my old buggy. So you can see it's really close to the axle. The belt's gonna touch it at idle, but it shouldn't hurt it because of course the front pulley will be spinning, but not the back. So as soon as it starts engaging, the belt's gonna come up off there. It's just lying on it, you know, just resting on it. But we just got it setting up there because I did order a new ball joint for the swing arm. So this thing should be pretty sweet. We just gotta get our carb adapter to put a we're gonna go with a 34 millimeter Makuni that Go Power Sport sells the whole kit if you have a big block, but with this, you're gonna need the adapter from Performance 670. The same uh, adapter will work on this engine uh, as a Predator. So we're gonna be using a 34 millimeter Makuni because they are super nice. We gotta build a new seat on it and get this thing ready to go. But uh, she's looking pretty sick. Remember guys to check out the links in the video description because they do help us out a ton and help us to continue to do these videos. You can find the engine, all these parts, even the old parts that we used on here. Uh, I may sell that high output charging system because I haven't been able to find it. People asked me where the links was when we did this video and there's no links for it. I had to call a company, go through a bunch of headache to get that charging system. So it's not something I can link up in my video. So do apologize for that but we'll put our old parts link uh, listing for everything we did before on this and the new one so it'll be in the comments set or the description broke down like that but make sure to check out Dural Max with their discount code uh, it'll be in the description you can save 20 percent in the month of October in 2020 also discount code for benchmark abrasives we get all of our cutting discs and grinder discs they're just amazing company to work with you go know, power sports has a lot of performance parts for these engines and uh, good OEM parts. You already know the drill with them. Brad Hill makes these gas tanks. A lot of parts from a lot of people on this thing. So we appreciate all of our sponsors and uh, can't wait to be able to ride this thing with eight to one because she gonna haul. Uh, haul the mail, baby. So we'll see you on the next one. Thank you guys for watching. We love you and God bless each and every one of you.